This Dylan Mulvaney stuff is very strange, okay? And you would have thought that Bud Light, seeing the fact that everybody is making it trend over the past few days, and boycott Budweiser, that maybe they might have a... Ah, they might have a turn of... Uh, or a change of heart, rather, when it came to their marketing strategy. But instead, they decided to double down, and there was another equally odd marketing campaign. So just, yeah, the new face of frat boy swell everywhere is well a 2023 female it's just i don't like this model it's like when dodge uh, re-released the challenger it's not quite the same as the original thing you know you get it close but it totally makes sense and this was something that i was talking about back when i did my initial video on the disgust that we all shared when it came to that but um bud light knows exactly what it's doing it's marketing to white women and guess who's drinking more than ever and there's going to be another story on that into the future as well that women are now out drinking men for very obvious reasons but the feminization of alcohol marketing this is an article from bbc of all places not that type of bbc but you know bbc this is from 2018 or something like that so there's at least an air of authenticity you know not everything is completely gone at that point but it's close. A 2018 study conducted in New York City found that women are willing to pay 13% more for the same goods as men, from personal care products to health products, if they rebrand to target women specifically. So, hmm, very interesting. You can read the rest of the article. That's just kind of what I wanted right there to begin with. So, if you had just put one of the new, one of the brand new mainstream talking points that trans women are women out there what do you stand to lose okay you're marketing to a group of people that are willing to pay more for your product but i thought at the same time they were also paid less so that's weird that doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense but to the people that are habitual bud light drinkers well you you've got people hooked on a vice and they aren't likely to stop drinking you might lose a couple of casuals but then at the same time you're thinking inside the boardroom okay this person's popular and they got big platforms so we can just give them a couple of bucks to uh, sit down with a six pack and make fun of some people that are either going to turn the other cheek on or forget about this entire stunt by the time June rolls around when we start painting everything with rainbows again and just move on to the new outrage. But I just wanted to see some of the funny responses to this stuff and we'll listen to Tom McDonald who catches a lot of shit. People say that he's not a very talented rapper. Um, he's actually pretty good. Um, some of his stuff's pretty decent. Um, but he had a very funny response to this, and we'll we'll play some of it. All right, so there's a lot of people talking about the new trans spokesperson for Bud Light Beer. Yes. Dylan Mulvaney. That's, uh, that's the most flattering picture I've ever seen of that, but all right. Mulvaney. Apparently to celebrate Dylan's 365th day as a woman, they've put Dylan's face on the can. Yeah, yes. you know. There's probably not the first time you could ever make that statement. Dylan's face has been on a can. Next, Tom. Dylan, the woman. Yeah. Personally, I think it'd be more appropriate to put David's face on some Pennzoil transmission fluid. Got it. Get it? What the hell? Hey, Bud Light, my mom's Hi. been a woman for 23,725 days. You didn't put her face on a can. Rosa Parks ain't on a can. Mother Tr Well, to be fair, yeah, um, but Rosa Parks was also a plant from the SPLC in order to... Um abolish uh, some of jim or joe biden's favorite laws but mother Teresa, that's going to be a weird one to put out there i'm just saying she was a nun after all and i don't think that she imbibed on any of that anheuser bush product just saying Teresa ain't on a can joan of arc ain't on a can mother mary ain't on a can and she gave birth to jesus anyway jesus. if you're one of the people boycotting bud light for partnering with dylan i'd like to congratulate you on joining the rest of the world who's been boycotting bud light ever since we discovered it's literally the most disgusting tasting beer known to man but seriously if you're one of the folks who's mad that the official spokesperson for Bud Light is now a trans person, take a look in the mirror. You're yeah. drinking light beer. Yes. You're halfway there yourself. That's what's up. That is the appropriate response to this stuff because as somebody who doesn't drink at all whatsoever, I've been boycotting everybody, everybody in the liquor industry for as long as I can remember. Buy your own drinks, bitch. I ain't fucking supporting any of your nonsense. Or you could be like Kid Rock, which I would love to play. I would love to play that video, but it probably violates YouTube's big gay guidelines when it comes to violence. He took out a rifle and shot a couple of packs that he must have had, or if he went out and bought them, you know, just to, just to film this. It's probably the best use of your time. But yeah, man, Bud Light is doubling down, in fact. Like, this just came out a couple of days ago. Bud Light says packed with trans activists. 
It's interesting because I want to probe into that. Not that. No, gross. No, don't take. Uh, it's full context on this. We're just going to probe into the accusation. Accusation here in a second. Dylan can continue to go out there and be mentally deranged and say that uh, I just can't get a kiss. It's like, yeah, no wonder. You try to pretend to be a toddler and a woman at the same time. It's very strange. Uh, try your luck with Joe. I hear he likes both of those categories. Underage and small children. Hmm. Mentally deficient. Uh, Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan Mulvaney helps authentically connect with audiences. See, exactly. Okay, and that's why this, that's why this study, okay, women are willing to pay more for less, and that's why they deserve less. But anyways, uh, Anheuser-Busch defended transgender activist Dylan Mulvaney appearing to be used as a Bud Light spokesperson after the beer celebrated 365 days of girlhood. Oh my God. Not womanhood or anything like that, because, well... Mental illness affects everybody differently. Uh, saying that Pact helps authentically connect with audiences. Yeah, you remember uh, Bud, or yeah, Budweiser specifically. They had the Clydesdales for a long time. They used to have the uh, bullfrogs that were sitting on the lily pads. Budweiser, Budweiser. Or the What Up campaign back in the day. Ooh, funny. Uh, story time with Don for a second. Is that campaign was running, uh, I was in uh, upper grade school, so grade five or grade six. In Alberta, uh, grade school runs from K to six, and then middle school is from seven to nine, and then high school is 10 to 12. So uh, either grade five or grade six, because I remember I was at Avondale Elementary School at the time. And one of my favorite t-shirts that I had in... Um, it was the Budweiser, it was the was up, uh, just chilling and having a, or whatever the fucking slogan was. It, it was still the was up, but yeah, Budweiser shirt. I would wear it, oh, from time to time, and depending on whatever t-shirts were there, I would either have to turn the shirt inside out because it was a alcohol t-shirt. Imagine that flying in today's day and age. Or uh, cover up the Budweiser logo. Like, it was just, it had text that was written across the chest. I... If I could remember exactly what it says, but it was chilling with a bud. I remember that being close to the end of it. Somewhere around here, right? Obviously, that's where I'm pointing to try to remember. I had to put a piece of tape over top of it. It's like, those were the concerns of the day pre-9-11. And now we got some mental case out here. <laughs> Trying to figure out how many cans in the six pack they can shove up there. Anyways, a uh, trans activist revealed Saturday that the beer company sent packs of Bud Light featuring the influencer's face as a way to celebrate a full year of girlhood that Mulvaney recently reached. Uh, Mulvaney said the cans were the most prized possession on Instagram. Uh, the post featured Bud Light partner. A video then featured Mulvaney in a bathtub. And that's the one that we watched uh, regrettably. But Anheuser-Busch. Here's a statement from them. Works with hundreds of influencers across our brands is one of many ways to authentically connect with audiences across various demographics and passion points. Yeah, I've seen them and I did some research into what the other influencers that you guys pick. Um, it's interesting. It's normally the same ladies that uh, get sponsorships from Gymshark. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying there's one outlier when it comes to this stuff. Anywho, uh, the commemorative can was a gift to celebrate a personal milestone. Yes, a tank the remaining reputation of a brand in order to virtue signal. Again, like there is not a single dollar that they're going to be losing from me. And you try to make yourself more inclusive, especially in today's day and age. Like, come on, this is why they do this stuff. Statement came after many people mocked Bud Light over the partnership. Conservative commentator John Cardio wrote, what the, who the hell at Bud Light thought this was a good idea. Well, the same marketers that have been out there pushing this is exact same stuff. Like last June, did anybody uh, forget the nonsense that was going on there? Literally, it's a meme. Everybody, th everybody knows that you can take a look at every single big brand on every single social media platform. The moment June 1st rolls around, oh my, all of those rainbow profile pictures start to roll out. And then the moment that July 1st comes around, they all just get tossed aside. Like, Outside of a couple of the hilarious jokes, doesn't really require that much introspection. Uh, might genuinely be the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life, Stephen Miller remarked. Yeah, that was that was kind of what I was thinking along those same lines. Townhall.com columnist uh, Derek Hunter joked Bud Light, the groomer of beers. That's kind of funny. Robbie Starbuck tweeted, uh, 
the message to conservative families from Bud Light seems to be, we encourage and celebrate the erasure of men and women, uh, along with all of the values you care about. They've gone totally woke. Uh, who will you even spend your money with? Uh, or will you even spend your money with them now? Yes, of course, because good, healthy, uh, good, healthy families were kept together by Budweiser. You know, back in the day when a father used to spend so much money on Bud Light products or full on Anheuser Busch products in general, yeah, families were really kept together with you know blackened eyes on a wife and a, a couple of holes in the drywall. Let's not fucking mince words when it comes to this stuff. They are capitalizing on a very prominent individual and uh, just using them until um, somebody who's further up the progressive stack comes along. That's what I opined on to begin with, and I just think that it's a form of abuse. But then, to go back with what Ollie London was talking about, okay? It just shout out to him, I think, at this point in time. It's very interesting, okay, because he's been pointing out a whole bunch of different things when it comes to this, and I think I think he's on to something. I really do, okay? So you take a look at those pictures, right? Day 11 of girlhood, and recently, I don't know, man, whatever the fuck. You, you take a look at that stuff, and outside of the surgery pictures, which are pretty grotesque and stuff, and obviously, you know, rounding of the face and stuff like that, but a full year. A full year of hormone therapy, no bottom surgery, apparently still has the franken beans, hasn't produced any other physiological changes. Are we not entirely sure that this isn't just woman face? That this just isn't? This just isn't a ploy in order to get the most attention possible, only to just flip whenever something just isn't working anymore and then just run on the detransition grift? I got all of the attention. It was just so nice, but how to get more attention than you can run the detransition circuit? Like, come on, man. Fucking come on. A video from March 2022 shows Dylan Mulvaney talking about being on homo hormone the replacement therapy for at least a month, 15 months later. In April of 2023, Dylan has shown absolutely no signs of breast tissue growth, which would typically appear within two to six months of taking estrogen. Yeah, yeah, don't you say. He's also shown a little sign of vocal change. A male voice changes drastically within a few weeks of estrogen. Huh, could... Are, are we going to play that? Because I was just going to show for structural purposes and uh, based on the initial claim. But I guess we can run. I uh, still got, yeah, I still got all this stuff active. If I got to suffer through it, y'all got to as well. Just a little snippet though. It's about time that we talk about hormones, something we've all got. I just have a few extra on board. First of all, first of all. This I think we got enough. I don't really care. Okay, but then. <laughs> Love ya. You'll test. Can you hold my hand? Yeah, I'm not seeing very much. I really wish that that guy was made out of cement and, you know, instead of holding hands, they were just handcuffed together, but oh well. But yeah, voice change? Not really. Like, very, not, not even, it's not noticeable. It's definitely not noticeable. Dylan doesn't believe he is a trans woman or generally uh, wants to become one. He is mocking women for profit. Yeah, that's the first time I would engage in that conversation that, um, this is an erasure of woman her of women this is a mockery of womanhood you know the rest of the trad cons they like to talk about it's an erasure of women the trans women argument i just think that it's funny and it's mostly all of this feminist nonsense that's eventually got you to this point but hey that's too far and it's like oh well you you voted and you supported all this stuff all of your inclusion well now now you're just getting beat by men again huh, well feminism really has accomplished a whole lot that's where i kind of leave it up to you guys because that's a very interesting point it could be selectively picked clips and maybe there's more comparable examples, but I think I, I definitely know this is an attention grift. I just don't know how far that grift hole goes, nor am I really looking for it because in general, axe wounds are nothing to write home about in the looks department, but especially if they're surgically induced, holy, be still my queasy stomach. So as we ramp up and get closer to the summer, we're just a couple of short months away before it really gets insane because... If you thought all of that nonsense from last year was a lot, this year is going to be in fucking overdrive, bro. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I should follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.